And good evening. Can everyone hear me okay? I don't. I. I'm, I think uh, you may have uh, your microphones muted at the moment, but uh, we're uh, just getting started here. And uh, we uh, want to thank you first off for uh, spending your uh, part of your evening with us. This is the uh, Echo Canyon Wash floodplain redelineation uh, public presentation uh, that we're doing here through Zoom. Uh, for folks who uh, may not be familiar with uh, the Zoom process, uh, we'll go through a few of the, the housekeeping things right here. Um, first off, the goal is just to have a productive, interactive presentation. And we wanna do that with uh, having an open dialogue with, with you folks there. And we just ask that you please be respectful of other participants in the meeting. Uh, we wanna be able to hear from everyone who wants to be heard. And if uh, we need more clarification uh, from you, we may ask you to unmute your mic and uh, ask your question verbally. We uh, First off, we recommend that you um, make use of the chat box. That's that uh, right in the middle of uh, your screen. You'll see uh, chat. You click on that and you can type in your question and um, we'll keep track of that as we're going along. And uh, at the end of the presentation, we'll go through all the questions that uh, you've written down for us and uh, take them in order. And uh, then we'll uh, go from there. And again, on the lower left-hand corner, you'll see the mute and unmute button uh, highlighted there. And uh, let me zoom in on that a little bit. And uh, your question will appear on the right-hand side of the screen and uh, everyone should be able to see it then. And uh, so we hope you have uh, lots of questions for us. We're, uh, we're here to, uh, to make sure you get all your questions answered. Uh, our agenda, first off is just, what is the Flood Control District of Maricopa County? We'll just go over that briefly. Um, going a little bit of background on the project and the modeling results that uh, we've come up with so far. Um, update, we'll have some updates on the FEMA floodplain uh, for Echo Canyon Wash, which some of you may recall as Cutia City Wash. Uh, we'll get into the scheduling for when things are going to start moving forward, and then we'll go into the Q&A that uh, we hope to have uh, with people that uh, have joined us, and we'll uh, go from there. And uh, our presenters tonight, well, first off, I'll introduce myself. I probably should have done that before. I'm uh, Dan Galvin with uh, Gun Communications. We're uh, working with the uh, Flood Control District of Maricopa County on the Echo Canyon Wash and a number of other uh, flood um, control district projects. Um, I'm just here as the moderator of uh, tonight's meeting and uh, Catherine and who's the uh, district project manager, and Rob Lyons, who's a consultant project manager uh, for the Echo Canyon Wash project. They'll be doing the, the lion's share of the, the informational stuff that uh, you all came here to see tonight. And uh, with that, Catherine, I'll uh, turn it over to you to go over uh, just a little thumbnail sketch of uh, what the Flood Control District does for uh, the folks of Maricopa County. Thank you, Dan. Um, like Dan said, my name is Catherine Gross, and I am the project manager for the Echo Canyon floodplain redelineation study. And essentially, uh, just a brief introduction to what the Flood Control District of Maricopa does is essentially we are an organization here that is uh, a county agency, and we are funded through a county taxing district, and we're here. Our work revolves around protecting the citizens of Maricopa County from the risk of injury and property damage from flooding. So we do this in a variety of ways. Uh, we do what is known as area drainage master studies, where we will evaluate what the flood hazards may be in any particular area or watershed. And then from there, we may go into phases where we identify ways to uh, reduce those flood hazards by doing design concept reports and design projects. And those identify ways to reduce flooding, maybe through storm drains, channels, and basins within a particular community. And then like this presentation here, one of the other methods we do is floodplain delineations. And how this protects Maricopa County is by identifying where that 100 year flood will be 
And within that zone, we have regulations that determine that anyone trying to build within that, that that structure or that house needs to be elevated above the flood depth. So therefore, when that 100 year flood happens, the house will be protected. The house will be elevated above the floodwaters and not damaged. And so that's essentially it, I think. Let me go to the next slide. So the background for this is, this is the Cudia City Area Drainage Master Study uh, Boundary. Uh, some of you may be familiar with this, following the whole process. This process started as an Area Drainage Master Study, where we identified where flooding occurred along all the washes within this generalized area between Phoenix and Paradise Valley and determined uh, results or identified locations of where that flooding would occur using our modeling approaches. The next phase moved into a design concept report or identifying or giving some initial concepts of where floodplains or the floodplain or flooding could be reduced along Echo Canyon Wash. Oh. And then this next phase of actually doing the floodplain study specifically for Echo Canyon Wash. And with that, I would like to turn it over to Rob Lamb. Um, could you back it up a little bit? The two slides could you, uh, that Rob will be speaking on there. That Rob will take you through what the results of that study are and how they compare to the existing floodplain and why we felt that we could update the floodplain in this area and what those changes look like. So thank you, and Rob, go ahead. All right, thanks, Catherine. Again, I'm Rob Lyons with J.E. Fuller. We're a civil engineering company that specializes in hydrology and hydraulics, which are fancy names for drainage and, and flood flooding. Uh, we, uh, we, we both analyze the, the hazards as well as um, design uh, mitigation solutions. And we partner with the Flood Control District of Maricopa County um, quite a bit. We've been doing it for 25 years. Um, so as Catherine said, this started with the area drainage master study, and one of the goals was to update the flood hazards in the area because I, I believe it had been at least 20 years since they'd been evaluated before. So the district is using state-of-the-art technology. Uh, it's actually a two-dimensional um, based both um, rainfall runoff model um, as well as how, how does that runoff route down through the the wash and through the neighborhoods and that sort of thing so it, it takes the the latest topographic data that that um, is a is basically a, a surface model of the terrain that that exists in the study area and then it takes the latest uh, NOAA rainfall statistics using rain gauge data from many many years past but but using the latest um, statistics to to basically estimate what is that hundred year rainfall and how does that translate to runoff. So what you're what you see on the screen here is we're we're zoomed in on the hundred year flow depths within Echo Canyon Wash. And you can see that there's a, a depth ramp, we call it. So we, we're turning off um, depths that are less than half a foot. So that's that's that legend that you see in the upper left hand corner. So basically the, the red colors are where the, the water is deepest within Echo Canyon Wash. And so basically what we did is once the modeling was complete using really good state-of-the-art data um, infrastructure, there's culverts across Tatum and McDonald, uh, 44th Street and Stanford Drive, et cetera. Um, using that, that physical data, we, we looked at the results and then compared that to the effective FEMA floodplain, basically what's on the, the FEMA maps right now and how do these results compare to that? And is, it, is there a justification for updating the FEMA maps? So that, that will take us to the next slide where we're overlaying these results with the effective FEMA floodplain. So you, you see the, the lines here um, in the, the kind of the bold blue and then the, the white in the middle. So there's the blue lines are the, the current floodplain. Um, and then the, the white lines that's, that's um, hatched, that's the floodway. And, and the floodway, as some of you probably know, that's the most hazardous portion of the wash. 
So that's where we really try to stay out of um, just just for the you know safety of the public and and structures. So based on this, we could determine that the latest model results are significantly different from the effective floodplain, and in more areas than not, there was actually a reduction in the floodplain. Um, it, it wasn't a reduction everywhere, but by and by and large, there was generally a reduction. So that so that's what initiated um, triggering moving on to the, the floodplain redelineation study. So on the next slide, um, this is just the floodplain itself. Um, I'm, I'm sure some of you are familiar with it. So we wanted to show you this and then show the next slide, which is the proposed floodplain or the, the revised floodplain. And, and what's challenging is, is to how do you look at the, the two different floodplains together? I mean, there's different ways to do it. Um, if you try to turn them both on at the same time, it gets really confusing really fast. So really the best way is to have a side by side and to zoom in on, on an area, but that gets really challenging in a, in a summary uh, public meeting like, like today. So we've got another version where we're, we call it a, a changes map. And so this is this was the, the best thing that we're able to show that, that can basically color code which areas are being removed from the floodplain or the floodway or being added. And so if you, if you look at the legend, I'll, I'll kind of walk you through that. Um, on in the very top, the, the red cross-hatched area is area that is added to the floodway. So basically it's an increase in the floodway from what's on the map today. And then um, moving down to the proposed changes to floodplain uh, in a similar shade of, of red, you, you see the area added to the floodplain. So the, basically the red colors mean it's an area that was added. So moving down um, the legend, the, the areas that are blue, both cross-hatched and blue um, in the floodplain, those are areas that are going to basically remain unchanged. There will be no, no change to the, to the floodplain in those areas. And then finally, what we've all been waiting for is the areas that are in yellow, which are areas that will be removed from the floodplain and floodway. So doesn't mean that, that these areas in yellow are safe from flooding. Um, but there's there's definite, definitely a reduction in, in the flood hazard in these areas from previous modeling. So from there, I think the next set of slides is just walking through a zoomed in version of these maps. So this is at the very uh, southwest portion of Coody, uh, Echo Canyon Wash, where it outfalls um, towards the let's see, that's that's Arizona Canal, and it goes through the Phoenix Country Day School. I'm sure you're all familiar with that. Um, so it's so in this area, you see a little bit of area added to the to the floodway in red um, on the very west end of the screen or the left side of the screen. That's all within. Uh, I understand that's all within flood control district property. Um, so that's not that should not be adversely affecting any property. And then you see some area that's removed, which is in the yellow cross hatch. Um, there is there is one area that was added to the floodplain right there on the south east corner of Stanford Drive and 40th Street. Um, so hopefully that's that's clear. And so the next slide will just be moving up to, up the wash basically. So just imagine you're walking up the wash. So here here we are at the intersection, and again you can see um, the area. There's there's a, some small areas added in red, but um, probably the most benefit to the water courses in this area. There's a lot of area that's in yellow now. So you can see in the, both in the flood way and the, the flood plain. So next. So here we're, we're getting up um, around 44th Street. And again, you can see a lot of blue. So there's a lot of area that's remaining in either the, the flood way or the flood plain. A little bit of fringe of added floodway that you can see just north, uh, upstream of 44th Street. Next slide. Okay. Not a whole lot of change here. It's very, very minor. And then this is the upper limits. So the, if you can, there's sort of a, 
I don't know what you call it. Almost looks like sun devil horns up there at the very <laughs> upper end. So that's the <laughs> effective floodplain. And so, so those areas were removed. Um, let's see. And then, yeah, there's not a whole, whole lot of change in this area, but a little bit of red, a little bit of yellow. So that, I think that's it for this slide. And then, and then just as a reminder, I'm sure Dan's gonna remind you at the end of the presentation, this map will be available on the project website. So, so everyone will be able to download it and you know zoom in on the area that they're interested in. Hi, this is Mike, I have a quick question. Sure, yeah, go ahead. Uh, thank you for uh, the background and the information. It's been very helpful. Um, I live at 4834 East Marston Drive, and I'm also representing um, the president of the Homeowner Association of Camelot Estate 3, which is basically the 25 lots on Marston Drive. And it looks like there's just one house per year illustration. At, is it 4844 East Marston Drive? That is in red. Let me try and uh, go back. Hopefully, yeah, oh, that it, one. Uh, it's uh, it it's just along Marston to... Drive. It's on the north end there. Like, um, does this look uh, like the slide? Yeah, when I clicked on my phone, <laughs> it took me out of the Zoom. So. Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah. That, it, it, back I'm and. Yeah, uh, which, uh, what area, what street? This one, this Martin. is this Martson. Uh, okay, and where is that in relation to 44th Martin. Street? It's uh, when you wrap around to the north there before East McDonald. It's your pretty much the last slide you were showing, sir. Oh, okay. Oh, can you see the screen now? Yeah. Okay. Is that, does that look like it or this one? Oh, yeah, yeah I think. Uh, again, I'm. Yeah, that, that should be it right there, Dan. Okay. So Marston is, yeah. if you look on the on the very bottom, you can see Marston Drive right there. Yeah, there you go. So so which house was of concern? Yeah, 4844, it looks like 4844. Okay, I think I'm... Drive. So, well, but, here's 47. North. Here's, here's, here's 47th, 47th place, 47th Street. It's on Marston. And again, I. It, it, yeah, Dan. I, no, that's okay. I've, I've got Google Maps open. It looks like it's it's really right in the middle on the south side of the wash. So, you see that little bit of pink down there, Dan? Okay. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're, like, yeah, right in there. Right about there. I think okay. that's that's where red? he's talking about. Is that the red you're looking? The red. Yeah, there's yeah, talking? there's Marston, and that would be 48th. So that that's this area here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I I don't know if it, it, this uh, we'd have to check to see if this was a property that was already in the floodplain, but it, it could be that it although it's a little bit different, it's it's still remaining to be in the floodplain. I'd have to. We could probably okay. get back to them about that. Yes, it, that, that, that would be great. I've got a meeting coming up with all the members here on November 10th, and I'll provide them an update based on this meeting. I just want to make sure that I have that clear. Yes, it, uh, which um, which homes along Marston Drive. And and please, again, put it in or fill out the comment card at the end, the online comment card. You can put your concern, and then that will definitely, and then or leave the information in the chat. Uh, you can leave it to... Uh, if you don't want to do the everyone, you can do it to either Dan or Kimberly McMahon or myself. Sure. Yeah. The, yeah. Please make use of the chat feature. You know, put your contact info and you know just to make sure we've got it. Um, put that in the chat, and uh, you know we'll follow up. Mm -hmm. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Anything? Do you want to go back to the timeline? Okay. All right. That's where we that's where we left it so all right so uh the floodplain redelineation timeline is starting today october 20th having this uh, public meeting and it also starts uh comments 
and inquiries from any interested citizens, please feel free to provide us any of your comments and clarifications. Uh, we will look, if you have some technical information or concerns, we will address that. We can look and see if there is any opportunity to, um, if, if you're concerned that there might be, uh, we're missing some technical piece of information that uh, would impact how the floodplain looks on your property. Uh, we do want to meet a uh, deadline of getting to FEMA by the end of November to submit this floodplain package to FEMA for them to start their review. So pretty much we're gonna look at all of 2023 for the FEMA review process to take place. It essentially is we submit to them, they have a certain uh, time frame where they'll uh, review it, submit comments back to us. We have a time frame for when we are supposed to address those comments and send them back to FEMA. So as we work through this process, there is the potential that that might be uh, take one or two go rounds with FEMA. So we have anticipated to place uh, that at one year before we would receive approval from FEMA. That would place the study going to be effective or official on the flood insurance rate maps, the floodplain maps, uh, in early 2024. They will. FEMA will release the maps and state that there is a 90-day appeal period. That is yet another opportunity that citizens will have to directly bring their concerns to FEMA. Um, again, FEMA will change the map if there are uh, concerns that meet technical merits to revise portions of the flood plan. Uh, we do intend to notify uh, the citizens when this 90 day appeal period will take place so that you have opportunity to submit during that window. Uh, should no appeals be submitted, then the study will essentially go into effect in that early between January and March, April of 2024. Is what we are Well, and I think that brings us uh... Pretty much to the end, uh, unless folks have some questions, we're happy to uh, answer any questions that uh, we can for you. So, um, and again, this is being recorded and will be posted on the uh, Flood Control District website under uh, the link there you see on your screen. Um, we've got a public comment period that starts today, goes to November 4th. And uh, please, if anyone has questions, um, you know, did we wind up with any in the chat? Um, well, hey there, Mr. how are you doing? Can you guys hear me? Yes, yes, we can. Hi there. I live in uh, Camelback Canyon Estates, and if if my house say your is name, not could, on you, the... could you say your name, sir? I'm, I'm sorry. Sure. So we. Yep, it's Ed Madden. Is my name? Okay. And uh, if our house is not in the shaded area for the charts that you showed out, how should we be thinking about that? Rob, is that uh, uh, Rob or it. Catherine? Yeah, that uh, we wanted to make sure that individuals in the area knew about the changes. So we invited essentially the block uh, so that they could see these changes in, in the community. If there is no shading, then you essentially were not in the floodplain and you will remain not in the floodplain. Okay, and are you guys gonna share this information, at least the, the maps? Yeah, this whole presentation will be uh, up on the website shortly okay, after right. we're done here. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, I'd, I'd just like to add, um, I think Catherine would back me up, that the FEMA maps have floodplains on them that have been studied, that have been defined. Um, just because you're in an area that doesn't have a defined floodplain by FEMA doesn't necessarily mean that you're you're not subject to flood hazards. So I just wanted to make that clarification. Yeah. Yeah. How do we ask a question? Could you, go to could, could you repeat that, sir? Somebody uh, had a question? Yes, I have a question. Uh, James Demaray at 4700 East Marston Drive. Yes, sir. Um, that's the last house before it goes underneath the overpass uh, to down to Stanford. And our question is, is the wash itself is very, very deep there. Uh, it's probably 
at least 20 feet below the elevation of our property line. And we are still in a flood plain on that. It looks like according to your drawing, it's the very last house on Marston right there at McDonald. And uh, it looked like it was still as part of that. Along here or uh, previous? No, it's, it's on Marston Drive. Oh, back. okay, yeah. What like the one we were looking at before? Right. Yeah, yeah it's right there. One more. Yeah. Um, one more. Yeah. One more back. Um, there you go. Yeah, there's Marston. Oh, oh that's yeah. this way. Still not there. Uh, yeah, I don't think that one's it. Next one. One more. There we go. That's the one. So it's it's the it's the property that's if you see the yellow hatch in the middle of the screen, it's it's that property. Mm -hmm. uh, no, a little north of McDonald. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, that's that's the one. Now we're still in the blue. There it looks like it remains in the floodplain. If that, if I'm seeing that right, if the if Marston angles down that way. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Yeah, um, I I guess we'd we'd have to dig into the model results, but. As as I recall, um, the the channel is significantly constricted through this area, and as I uh, as I, and I might I might lean on um, our, one of our technical guys that's that's on the call. Um, the I I think the culverts under McDonald may not have capacity for the full hundred year flow, but it, it's been a while since we looked at the model results, but. Yeah, the, the current model, similar to the effective FEMA model, is showing that 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 area is subject to a flood hazard. And that is because of the backup on McDonald, you're saying, or not? That, the, not that's the... part of it. That's part of it. Plus, you can, if you look, if we didn't have the the layers on, you can see just by looking at an aerial photograph that the channel is quite a bit wider upstream and then gets significantly constricted as it moves towards McDonald Drive. I don't see that. It, it looks like it's quite wide behind our house when we go out there to look at it. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if uh, if flood control has looked at it. We've talked to flood control numerous times because water backs up when it hits the concrete there at the overpass, and we have standing water as a result of that uh, behind our house. Yes, those um, those I think that were were brought to the attention during the ADMS phase of, of uh, that, and it would be uh, the flood control district again is the county agency. And was, if you brought it up with us during the public meeting, that area is uh, one of the other jurisdictions, so we don't have like community jurisdiction in that area. Um, but it essentially is is uh, that is an under the control of that is an under the control of Maricopa flood control. No. So who, who controls it then, the city of Paradise Valley? It's the city of Paradise Valley is the one who um, is responsible for the floodplains in the area. If the ground is, is uh, but that's just sort of the floodplain management side. Um, okay, because we several years ago, uh, probably three years ago, we had a meeting with the Maricopa County uh, flood control at the PV Town Hall, and I was under the impression that they oversaw that whole area, unless that's changed since then. That was essentially us presenting the results or getting uh, doing a data collection phase for that Kudia City Wash Area Drainage Master Study, that we were studying the watershed, uh, essentially on behalf of the communities in the area, the jurisdiction, City of Phoenix and Town of Paradise Valley. So in the future, if there's any problems with the wash there, then we address those to the city of Paradise Valley. Is that correct? You would raise your concerns, yes, with the city. Of, okay, uh, thank you very much. And, and this is Mike Androcci again. I'm the president of the Homeowner Association and Jim's one of the members along Marston Drive. Uh, perhaps uh, Dan or, or somebody uh, off this call uh, this week, we can talk about this because I've been shared a number of times with the town of Paris Valley, Brent and Jerry and others, that it does not fall under their jurisdiction with the town of Paris Valley, this issue. So we just have to get all on the same page. Well, it's it's essentially, if it's private property, 
then it's it's, uh, it's going to be yeah a conversation that's deeper than than this phone call. Please please uh, please feel free to um, put the information in the chat. <clears throat> And I believe that the panels are probably aware of it. I do believe this did come up as part of the area drainage master study. And, and Catherine, this is Paul Mood with the town of Paradise Valley, and I can maybe elaborate a little more. While the while the town is the floodplain administrator, the the wash is on private property and the private property or owners are responsible to maintain that wash such as you know vegetation trees and and things like that that's per our town code that has nothing to do with the floods though the code so uh, inclusive of the brush and everything that we've pretty much cleared out of that wash area we're responsible for the for the bed of the wash itself that is that is correct. <laughs> so if we want to go and slurry the bed, we can. Um, not not necessarily. You'd have to. Well, get you just a, said it's on private property, so. Yeah, but, yeah. but you you would have to get a grading or engineering permit through the town, and we would review it, and then it's you would have to provide plans. It's in a floodplain. There's a floodplain use permit. Um, you can't really, you're not supposed to speed up the water, which it could, it could potentially speed up the flow. Well, it, it would definitely do away with the back water that we're seeing when it hits the concrete there at the bridge. Yeah. That's, when I look, that's a big problem that, that, that needs to be slurried. That area does just to keep the water flowing rather than just sitting there and ponding. Yeah. When I looked at that in the past, you know, you, it, the issue extends several hundred feet upstream. Correct. Yeah. And, yeah. and and what has been an issue in the past with a lot of the ponding we found is one of the, the properties in the area had a uh, water leak with their pool piping. Correct. That was daylighting in the wash. But that was, that was further up, further north of the wash. That didn't come down to the area that I'm talking about. That was up uh, right close to the bend there uh, where the wash is, that, that that house is located. Correct, but the water does travel downstream and then it, it, it ponds where the, the bed of the wash has been scoured. And we still have standing water from the now, last Now, Paul, time. are you working in conjunction with the Hillside Committee on the new construction that's going to be going up in there? Um, yes, I will be. I, I don't know exactly what property you're referring to, but yes, I will be working with Hillside. Yeah. 4744 uh, Valley Verde, I believe it is. It's Valley Vista. I Valley think. Vista? Yeah. They're putting, in, they're putting in head walls and a whole lot of water diversion in their plan, which will affect the wash going to us under McDonald into Phoenix. Yeah, we'll, we'll be looking at those plans. Okay. Okay, I got a uh, uh, raised hand from Ted Crowley. Mr. Crowley, if you'd like to ask your question. Hi, yes, I'm Ted Crowley from East St. Joseph Way. Can, can you hear me? Yes. The, uh, recently, within the last couple of months, somebody put came in and constructed six metal poles across the, the wash just on the west side of 40th Street. That backed up debris and backed up water over 40th Street, back east up Cootie City Wash. I guess I want to know who put in those pylons and why. Was that right across from Phoenix Country Day? No, it's north of Stanford. Right there at the it's north of Stanford. Yeah. North That's of Stanford on 40th Street on the north, or excuse me, on the west side of 40th Street. And it's blocking the wash. So it's, it's basically in the town of Paradise Valley. Dan, that, that would be slide 13. 
I'm sorry, I didn't understand uh, that. Maybe maybe 14. It's it's oh. going to be right in between the. Let's see. Yeah. So he's talking about uh, 40th Street. I think they're bollards. Is, is that right, Paul? Yeah. Their their access barriers. That that's correct. Those those are the access barriers on the on the west side of 40th Street. Um, I believe those those were put in before my time with the, with the town, so I don't know the exact history with them. I don't know if people were were getting back That's there cool. and, and they were Very put up. I, I they were just put up two months ago. We oh. we saw it go up and we wondered why you were barricading the wash to flood our neighborhood, and it did back up the water during this last big rain. I have photographs of all of the debris stuck on those new poles that were installed two months ago. Oh, I, yeah, I don't, from what you're describing, I don't believe I'm aware of that. So if you can send us some photos and we can go, I mean, I can go out there and look. And uh, the debris is still piled up onto those poles right now. Huh. If you want to drive by, or I can send you photographs if I know where to send them. Um, yes, there there will be a link um, in yeah. the chat when uh, we wrap up here that uh, will take you to a uh, a site where you can plug in all your information, upload documents, photos, and you know whatever you have that uh, any you know technical information you can provide. Uh, you'll uh, be able to get to it through that link. And I also have a yeah, raised, raised hand from Glenn Faster. Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, if you go to the next slide, that's uh, 44th Street and Camelback Canyon Estates. Uh, we have a project there that we've been working on for the last three years. Um, so we are the uh, one, two, about the third house in uh, to the right. Uh, we're in the yellow. So uh, can I just confirm you say area removed? Yeah, that's correct. That's the one right there. Uh, it says area removed from the floodplain. So that has already been removed from the FEMA map. Um, or is, is that, that planning that to is be? where we're proposing to remove the floodplain. So okay. that's like the 2024 when, when FEMA has put, published the updated maps. Yes. Should they agree with us? That is the change that you will see. So oh, okay. You will so be outside of the uh, essentially cr FEMA criteria based 100 year. There might still be some local drainage coming down the street or whatnot, but they're outside of the FEMA floodplain limit. Mm -hmm. So we, we've been working on this project since, uh, I guess, 2019. We attended your uh, Paradise Valley uh, presentation of your master study. It's been uh, nothing less than a nightmare trying to get through and navigate all this thing, having our grading and drainage engineer uh, come up with trying to get a study to see if we could actually our existing property could be taken out of the floodplain map, but that basically uh, turned out to be pointless because nobody would sign off on this and it takes, you know, almost a decade for them to update it. I believe your the data that we went by was somewhere by, back 1985 or 1989. Uh, then we switched gears and we decided to go with a Clomar F. Uh, to then raise the property, which we did. We raised it almost four feet. Um, and, you know, we got approval from FEMA for the Clomar F. Uh, everything was fine. We go build the house. Uh, now we're getting to the very end of the building the house. And we're basically being held hostage by City of Phoenix. They won't give us our certificate of occupancy until we do an entire new approval process, which I understand that we have a, you know, a certificate of elevation and we show we've complied to everything that was done in the, in the Clomar, but they want us to reapply to FEMA and then wait several months for them to approve our, uh, you know, basically rubber stamp it saying that you've done what you said you were going to do. And then they will issue our certificate of occupancy, which I find very unacceptable because if you have the city of Phoenix as a floodplain division, they must have some sort of authority to go, okay, you've complied with it. We understand here's your certificate of occupancy. But like I said, we're being held hostage, which could take us months and months, you know, just to get through this. 
mm. you know so it's you know it's a a little bit of a, a gripe i guess but you know it's uh you know what's really happening and and what really frustrates me just so you have a, a general idea you know people go and they apply for you know through the city of phoenix floodplain division for a small remodel um you know, their small remodel for $80,000, you know, they take the house down to the slab, they, they probably spend seven, $800,000, they build a brand new house. And it's frustrating to us who have gone through the whole process to do it. And nothing happens to them, they get approval, they get through their whole thing, their build. And, you know, they get it done in, you know, eight months where we're, we're still three years into our project. You know, so uh, I think there's people taking advantage of these cracks, you know, in the process, because nobody really follows up once they have approval to do a, a, a renovation. Well, the renovation basically is a new house for them, you know, but, you know, that's the situation we're at right now. Um, it seems that your, you know, yellow being removed from there won't have any effect upon us right now. And uh, is there anybody on the call here from the city of Phoenix? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, Eric Broberg, city engineer with the city of Phoenix. Uh, just recently, we had some staffing changes. So now the floodplain group uh, has been moved under me. So I'm doing my best to get caught up on some of these um, issues and, and projects and those types of things. But uh, if you do submit your comment or question right through the end, then this group will be able to get me in contact with you and we can talk about it a little bit more. Um, like to just get some more information. Obviously, you've been working with our planning and development group, yes. uh, which then works with my with the floodplain group. So there is some interaction there. But you know, the specifics of it, um, not entirely um, apologize. I'm not entirely up to speed with the situation, but if you can get us your contact information, we can definitely uh, make sure that, uh, you know, we're able to connect and have some more conversation about it. Okay. I appreciate that. Thank you. No problem. Yeah. Glenn, please uh, make sure I've got your, uh, the email you sent me and uh, you know, make sure you add your, uh, your contact info and phone numbers and stuff like that in the chat when, uh, when we're done here. Okay. We'll do. Thank you. Okay. Do we have uh, any more questions or comments or anything we'd like to discuss at this point? Back to the wash again. This is James Demare again. Yes. Um, could we also uh, get a list of the people at Paradise Valley that are working with the wash? I mean, Phil, whoever it is that is, is working with the wash, I'd appreciate some information on that. So if there is some concerns, we can go directly to the source. Yeah, uh, is the gentleman from Paradise Valley still with us? Um, yes, uh, Paul Mood, town engineer with oh. the uh, town of Paradise Valley. Um, it normally would be me, but my last day with the town is going to be November 1st. Oh. Um, we have a senior engineering technician, Sean Snyder, that I can provide his information. That'd be great. We can all just we can contact Annie to find out if there's any changes in that also, the vice mayor. Um, I mean, they're just going to send the email to us, so it would be better just to contact the staff directly. Okay. Paul, I, I got to take this opportunity just to thank you. This is Mike Andrachik. You've been phenomenal uh, ambassador of the town of Paradise Valley, so I wish you the very best. All right. Thank you. And yeah, I'll, I will be going to the uh, city of Flagstaff. They have some flooding issues as well. <laughs> All right. Well, um, if anyone has any other questions, please, uh, we're happy to take them at this point. If not, um, you know, please add them to the chat or go to the uh, to the link that we'll post up there. I think, uh, Albert, we can probably uh, post that currently. Um, 
for folks to follow up with us. Um, you know, we'll be happy to, uh, you know, read what you have to say and get back with you. And um, I think uh, this also um, shows you where the tape of this uh, presentation will be located. Um, that's on maricopa.gov forward slash Echo Canyon Wash FDS. Just go to the, uh, the county's uh, website and just look for flood control and um, you'll be able to uh, have a look at this again and uh, go over the parts that uh, you, know, you may have missed if you joined us late. Um, and then once again, you know, if you've got the, uh, the link to us through the chat feature, then you know we're happy to uh, to follow up with you about uh, whatever questions you might have. But uh, that pretty much uh, concludes our uh, presentation for you this evening. Um, if uh, no one has any additional questions, I guess that uh, wraps it up for us. And we do thank you very much for uh, joining us this evening, taking some time out of your evening to uh, to go over this. It's important for us to hear from you. And uh, we know you want to hear from us. So thanks again for joining us. And uh, we'll uh, be back in touch with those of you who have uh, you know, added your questions to the chat or uh, get in touch with us through the contact um, links that uh, we provided tonight. So uh, thank you for coming and I'll have a good evening.